G'day guys, you're at the Song Room and I'm Tim. Hello, I'm Chris. And who have we got on tonight, Chris? Uh, Timmy, we have uh, Mark Gable uh, from the Choir Boys and we've also got Luke Yoward from King Cannons and 131s. I'm so excited. Yeah, yeah let's check it out. Make a warm welcome to our host for this evening, Jess, Jess McGuire. Hi, fellas. Hi, Jess. Another intimate evening together here in Northcote. It's always nice. Uh, and our first guest uh, is the voice and the musical genius behind the Aussie anthem, Run to Paradise. We couldn't not mention it. Um, he's the front man and founding member of the Australian rock band, The Choir Boys that was founded in Sydney in 1979. And allegedly, Chris, Tim, he has some pretty excellent stories about the music scene in that day. And the reason I was late to my own seat is because we were just having a chat and he was telling me a story by the bar. So I think he's going to be full of them. Please put your hands together, Mark Gable. <laughs> Mr Gobble. Oh, yes. Mark Goebbels. Now, I'm assuming, like, because of Chris's sass, that you guys have been pals before tonight. You've, you met on the Rockwiz tour, is that right? Yes. How, how were they? Be honest with me, Mark. Don't look at them, just look at me and tell me. Well, they were actually really good. I thought that yeah. they were the highlight um, of, the, of the, uh, the, that Rockwiz. Oh, come time. now. You were. I thought you, you guys were... OK, somebody else's a highlight. It wasn't well, me. That was, yeah. What about Doc Neeson's final performance? Well, and it was amazing, and of course, but the thing is that, you know, Doc, is, Doc was Doc, you know, and I was me, and mm. Steve Kilby was Steve Kilby, and he was on the performance as Classic well. Classic Kilby. But I thought the basics really stole We were the it. easy beats. Hey? We were the easy beats. You were the easy beats, yeah. and you, the harmonies were incredible. I loved it. I, you. I fell in love with you guys. I used to follow you around <laughs> for the whole tour. <laughs> now, Mark, we're going to open with um, one of your original tracks uh, called James Dale. Can you yeah. tell me a little bit about this song? It's about my father, who I uh, disliked intensely. Mm. He was... Um, he's an Irishman and he, I mean, he had a tough life, you know. I mean, he was somebody born in, in uh, 1910, I think, and he was asked to leave home in, um, when he was 14. Mm. So that was 1924. So, uh, James, uh, we don't have enough money to... Yeah. Everybody talks like a pirate in Ireland. Yeah. Um, I was about to say, this, you're doing a Tom Cruise in Far and Away impersonation. Yeah, it's, it's, it came out Scottish. Oh, James. <laughs> oh, Liam, Liam. His name was James. You have to go. We cannot afford you. You've got to go. So he left at 14 and then got a job on a merchant ship um, and then jumped ship when he was in Queensland uh, and hence his life in Australia. But he called himself James Dale, which presumably was his middle name, but if, uh, I've got his birth certificate, not with me, <laughs> he, uh, None of us are birthers here. There's no trumps. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to see that birth certificate. I'm afraid. I think it's a monkey. Um, <laughs> it's me. Oh, was that plugged in? No. And um, uh, his name wasn't James. It was, I mean, it was James. His name, second name, wasn't Dale. He had no second name. It was monkey. <laughs> so there you go. So this is a, a song about my father, who I disliked intensely, and um, because he was a raving lunatic. Yeah. That'll do it. Um, but um, I, I really would have loved to have loved him, but I just didn't. Start his dreams. Inside. 
our next guest, let's welcome uh, our next guest, is a songwriter, guitarist and music producer living in Melbourne, originally from New Zealand. Uh, you would know him as the frontman of King Cannons. Originally, he's now fronting the 131s and probably doing some of his own stuff too. Put your hands together for Luke Yeawood. <laughs> Hi, pal. Nice to meet you. What's up, Maguire? How you doing? Yeah, we know each other. So we, we talked about some of your former bands and current bands uh, when I did the introduction. Tell me a little bit, before we get into this song, um, about how you started King Cannons. Um, it was upon my very abrupt exodus from a punk rock band, actually, in Auckland, New Zealand. Called? Suicide Dogs. Excellent. Good, That's good, exactly what I wanted it to be. Good punk band name. Yeah. And then you leave that. <clears throat> and then I was like... Nah, this is too. This is doing my head in. I'm so angry. I Did you have know. a uh, mohawk? I, I many, many mohawks. <laughs> many mohawks. All of the haircuts. A really long one. A very long one. Awesome. Spiky and hard. Spiky and hard. Okay. Spiky and hard. Multi colours. Lots of leather and um, and a bad attitude. Holes in and and what's an alcohol problem. What was so? What was the straw that broke the, broke the camel's back? I always liked um, Jamaican music. I always liked reggae music and ska music, rock steady music, and. Um, and like folk and country and stuff as well. And I just wanted to start a band where there wasn't any boundaries for what you could do. No one's going to say, oh, well, that's not accepted in this community, man. You can't have a slow jam or you can't have a fucking, you know, basically saying I can't have whatever kind of song I want to make. I'm like, well, how about I fuck all that off and I just get myself into a situation where I can just write whatever the fuck I want. And so I did. And that was King Cannon. So, so it's all good. So we're going to try this one. And this is the brightest light, isn't it? Yep, okay. We used to walk for miles, never own no car. We'd hitch our rides from town to town, spending what we had at the bar. Something about a midsummer's Friday night, the smell of the grass and gasoline never failed to make this heart fonder. Someone else that uh, has affected the whole wide world with his particular musical style. No, I'm just, I'm just faffing. Um, it's Rod yeah. Stewart, and you've you've picked a banger, which is uh, Maggie what? May. Maggie what? May. Well, well, this is really done with Rod Stewart and the Faces. You know, just as Rod Stewart was um, transferring his career to himself, to his solo career. Did you ever, did you ever get tempted to do that? Sorry. Did no. To no, leave I'm the Faces and become Rod Stewart. Did you ever get tempted <laughs> to do that? No. Um, was well, if, if he should franchise himself out and I could be Rod Stewart. 
He can be busy fathering children, which he still does. Probably got another one due any minute. She's still doing that? Oh, non-stop, no, mate. He can't be. You can't even shake his hand without getting pregnant. I avoid him. Like Richard Wilkins on the on the Logie's red carpet. Couldn't Similar shake his hair. hand. Similar yeah. hair, yeah. Right. Richard Wilkins, that's interesting. Mm. Um, I used to know him when he was Richard Wilde. Uh, oh, because he was... He did, anyway. That was his name, Richard Wilde. But anyway, Maggie May... Wait, in what context? Wait, wait, wait. Dick what? Wilde. Oh, OK. <laughs> when was he... Why was he Richard Wilde? Because he was in a band in the 80s called Wild and Reckless. Really? And that's yeah, how Wild he... and Reckless. And I used to do support us at gigs all what? over the place. That's right? awesome. And he'd get up there and he'd do his 80s dance, right? And he was cute then, you know, he's a good looking boy. And he used to do his, and he was a shit, shit singer. But he used to, sorry Richard, mate of mine, kind of. Anyway, he'd do his dance. And he'd go, I'm wild and they're reckless. That was the trick. Yeah, it doesn't work so well with Wilkins and reckless. No, no, I'm Wilkins and they're I actually quite like it. I'm Wilkins and they're reckless. <laughs> But that was Richard wanted to be a pop star and it didn't really work for him. Let's see if I can sing this one. Bloody hell. You can. We've got... Very reminiscent of um, uh, Silverchair on the David Letterman show. <coughs> <laughs> He's burned Silverchair out of nowhere. I love that. No one pre could have predicted that moment. We've got another cover uh, and we're going to keep that kind of reggae vibe happening with um, your choice, Redemption Song. How was it finalising your covers for tonight? Like trying to figure out what you wanted to do? Oh, man. Like... At the same sentence, hard and not hard. I, I go. I kind of wanted to play some tunes. I mean, that people knew. Mm. You know what I mean? Because like I'm gonna be playing a bunch of my shit that no one fucking really knows, or at least two songs. Um, and I don't know. I just I just wanted to play like the really simple, important ones that are mm. broad. You know yeah. what I mean? And Bob Marley, um, you know, in his career and, and in his life come from fuck all, you know, like little fucking tiny Jamaica, not on the map musically, you know, like hardly on the fucking map geographically. And, uh, you know, brought this fucking music of Jamaica out to the whole fucking world. And I mean, I don't know, from 
being a guy growing up in New Zealand, I'm not saying it's the same. It's not the same. Jamaica's a fucking poor country. New Zealand's not a poor country. But, um, you know, to be able to do that and to have songs like that and to reach that fucking level of people, I just think that's fucking beautiful, you know? And so I, that's why I want to play this song. It's, a, it's an important song, a spiritual song. Let's hear it. You want to play? All right, everyone can sing it. Minutes after they took I from the bottomless pit, my hand was made strong by the hand of the Almighty. We forward in this generation, triumphantly. These songs of freedom is all I ever had is redemption songs. Emancipate yourselves from mental slavery. None but ourselves can free our mind. Have no fear for atomic energy. There's none of them can stop at the time. Now how long shall we kill our prophet while we stand aside and look? Some say it's just a part of it. We got to fulfill the goal. Won't you help to sing these songs? Beautiful. Now we're going to end on another Sultan's Choice, which is an always an exciting time of the evening. What have uh, Chris and Tim dug up for us this evening? The best song ever. Oh, great. I love when, when, the, when everyone's on board with the pick. Well, what was the inspiration um, for this week's, by the way, Chris? Uh, actually, to be honest, this is like pretty much the saddest song that I think I've ever heard. I definitely felt, I remember when it came out and I felt a lot of emotions. And then I was in a school choir that had to sing it. I stopped going. I, I remember, I, um, I only remembered recently that my, my mum seemed to put us in a lot of after school care slash holiday programs. And uh, I think I was doing a pottery class in grade two. So I must have been eight years old or so. And uh, my dad came and picked me up. And this song was on the radio. And I heard it and I was just, it just like took me. And then for maybe an hour, a good hour or two, I had I hid in the cupboard. I can still see myself there just wailing. I was from so upset. It was so it was so moving and just like. Now that you mention it, I reckon I had a pretty similar feeling. I don't think I hid in the cupboard for a couple of hours, but I honestly fucking reckon I, I reckon I had a similar thing. This the song we're talking about, by the way, if you haven't picked up, is Mike and the Mechanics, in the Living Years. And the Mike and the Mechanics goes from being like super fun when it's doing all I need is a miracle, and it's like that's like a good time. It's <laughs> fucking go all night. I love that song. Oh, I get so revved. It's got it's got a guitar solo. I actually didn't know that was them. Yeah, it's them, but it's like they've got a guitar solo that's not done by guitar. It's done on a keyboard. So just when you're expecting this blistering guitar, but it's like, anyway. But that is not this song. But this is a very different song. Shall we just? I I actually, when I was, I even sent my mum and dad a message this morning, just telling them I love them. When I was printing this out, I was just like, this is how fucking sad this song is. Wow! I burst out in tears. A feel-good end to this evening. Keep away. (laughs) 
Excellent. All right. Well, look, let's just hear it. In the living years, everyone just process your feelings about death and loss while this lovely cover happens. Every generation blames the one before all of their frustration beating at your door. things I had to say I think I caught a spirit later that same year I'm sure I heard his echo in my baby's newborn tears I just wish I could have told him in the living Need a hug, pal? How'd you go? How'd you go? No, pretty good, thanks, mate. Yeah. You wore the flano as emotional protection. <laughs> Whatever, dickheads. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us for another edition here of The Song Room. Please put your hands together for our guests this evening, Mark Gable, Luke Yeowood. Thanks, everybody. Well, 
Thank you, Tim and Chris from The Basics, our house band of feelings. And a big thanks to our host, Jess McGuire. Oh. We'll see you all again next week.